Great. Hi, everyone. This is a part two video, uh, so definitely watch part one first if you're just stumbling onto this uh, particular video. And what we're doing here is we're modeling out uh, kind of a death spiral situation with respect to team attrition. So you've got a team. Um, there are people leaving at kind of a normal rate. Uh, it's a case where we're not hiring, so we simplified the model uh, a little bit. And what's happening is the the more that there are kind of open positions on the team, uh, the more that there's a gap uh, in terms of the team size versus the ideal time size, the higher the attrition rate becomes because the team has more work um, that each person has to do. It doesn't seem like it's the place to be anymore, and it's really driving a greater and greater attrition rate. So we're kind of modeling that, that particular death, uh, death spiral. So... Um, what we've done um, is we have modeled this part of it. Um, so you've got a team size, you have people quitting at a fixed attrition rate. And what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this attrition rate into a variable instead of it always being fixed. So basically, what we're going to do is you've got the ideal team size, and we're going to say that's a fixed number. So let's say that's 100 people. Let's say we start with 100 people, and then the gap is really the ideal minus the team size. So the gap might you know, be a few people, then 10 people, then 15 people, and so the gap will be this minus this. So what we really need to determine now is the formula between gap and attrition rate. So as the gap gets bigger, the attrition rate gets bigger, okay? So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this out. I'll show you how, uh, how I do this. So basically, we're going to estimate this. If you have some good quality data, you can use data to do this. Otherwise, you can estimate it and it still will provide some value. So what we're going to do is the gap will drive the attrition rate. And we're going to draw what that curve looks like. So the way I usually do this is I pick a couple points. So the point would be, um, let's say there's no gap. What would be the attrition rate if the team was completely filled up? So let's say we'll do 5% for that, which is a pretty low uh, attrition rate. So right here, when the gap is zero, the attrition rate is 5%. Now let's say the gap is quite big. Uh, so let's say the gap is 30. What would the attrition rate be at 30? So you can estimate something relatively large, like 20%. So this is what I'm going to do, is estimate... 20% is my second point. Okay, so when the gap is 30, the attrition rate is going to be 20%. And then you basically have to decide, well, what is the relation? Is this a straight line relation? Ship is it curved in some fashion, that sort of thing. And for ease of simplicity, I'm just going to make this a straight linear equation. So as the gap gets larger, the attrition rate gets larger, and that's my second point, 30 is 20%. If it's 40, it's going to be higher. It's just going to keep going up. So, so that's the way I'm going to, uh, going to do it. Now, the next thing you have to do before you do it in Excel is you have to turn this into a real equation. And um, I'll do that, uh, do that right now. And basically, um, you learn this in seventh grade. Uh, I know this because uh, one of my kids is in seventh grade, and they do these linear, linear equations. And so let me just, it's not too much math, but let me just describe it to you. So these equations, if you recall, are y, which is the attrition rate, equals mx plus b, y being this variable, x being this variable, m is the slope of this line, and b is the intersection point um, when it crosses the y-axis. Okay? So we're going to convert that into our variable. So attrition rate equals, the slope is the rise over the run. So the rise between these two points is... 15. So 15% is the rise between two points, those two points. And the run that contains that rise is this, it's 30. So between these two points, one point row is 15% over the run, which is 30, the amount that the x-axis did. So that's how you do slope. x is gap, so times the gap, plus b is the... Um, this 5%, right where it crosses. So that's what the equation is. The attrition rate is 15% over 30 times the gap 
plus 5%. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. That's, you, that's really just seventh grade kind of linear equations and how to take a graph and turn it into an equation. So what we're going to do now is use, we're all set now to model it in Excel. So we're going to use this equation, plug that in for attrition rate relative to gap, have quitting be reformulated from this new modified attrition rate, and see what happens to the team size in that case. And then we'll come back to the board and, uh, and summarize. All right? Okay, now we're going to go back to the model and make it more complicated by incorporating the gap affecting the attrition rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the existing model intact so we can compare them. Make a copy of that and paste it down here. And for the new model, I'll just rename ending team size to ending team size 2. And you'll see why I do that in the end. Okay, now we have basically one more constant. You can see no arrow flows into that. That means it's a constant. So we have ideal team size. And let's say the ideal team size is 100. So since it's a constant, we'll remember to name that. Okay, so that's 100. And so quitting is more complicated, or attrition rate and quitting are more complicated now. So let's add a few rows to address that complication. So we have um, gap. The gap is calculated as the ideal team size minus the beginning team size. So in period one, we have no gap. Now the uh, attrition rate, we'll just call this modified attrition rate. So modified attrition rate, we're going to use our formula now. So that was gap times the rise, which was 15%, divided by the run, which was 30, plus the intersection point, if there is no gap, which was 5%. Okay, so in this first period, the attrition rate is 5% because there is no gap. Uh, you'll see that will change. And, uh, and then quitting now is the beginning team size times the modified attrition rate divided by 4 to make it quarterly. And that is it. So we're going to copy this guy out. So that's our new model. Um, and now we're going to graph them. So we're going to compare the two. So I'm going to select that one and select that one. On a Mac, I'm hitting the command key to do that. New charts, uh, line, take that one. Okay, and there's our little graph. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see, um, sorry, let me shrink that. Okay. So you can see with this one sorry, that uh, basically the um, ending team size, it's, it doesn't fall as fast because it starts at 5%, if you recall. And then it essentially just crashes in this period from basically you know 90 or something like that straight down to 20 very quickly, as opposed to the other one, which has a more graduated, uh, graduated thing. And so this is essentially the death spiral. You got attrition, you got people quitting, the attrition rate goes up, and it just it just really crashes down as you would expect in kind of a, a death spiral situation. And you can also see that, uh, you can't see in the graph, but you can think about the model, there was no real precipitous event that caused this crash to all of a sudden occur. So that's what you get with tipping points, essentially. There's no you know, one thing that occurs, but it just gets kind of over the over the hill and then just crashes down, which you see in this uh, in this particular case. It slows down <coughs> quite simply because um, you know higher percent of uh, um, you know of, uh, almost a number at zero, uh, you know, not much can occur there. But you can see the you know the big crash uh, as you would expect. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the board and uh, and then. Um, uh, cap this off. All right. All right. Great. I hope that was uh, useful and educational. I'd like you to build that spreadsheet uh, back at home. And again, you can email me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to explain any aspect that wasn't clear in this video. So a couple things I like to do as a final recap is I go back to my behavior over the time graph, which were my guesses as to what was going to happen, and I uh, I modify that. So uh, what we saw is scenario one was pretty accurate. But scenario two, uh, it actually starts out a little bit better because it's only 5% attrition. Then it just kind of crashes. So it looked more like that where you have kind of an aggressive.
aggressive, you start out okay, but then an aggressive crash once, you know, the gap starts increasing, that attrition rate uh, keeps going up. So, um, so what did we learn from here? A uh, couple things. One is I hope this adds more color to your thinking about uh, death spirals and vicious cycles, um, what they kind of look like, and you notice that you don't really notice it maybe in the beginning, but then all of a sudden there's some kind of tipping point and things just kind of crash, um, and, uh, and that's, that's what you see in this, in this case. In fact, a lot of, on the word tipping point, a lot of tipping point scenarios that you can think of are things that kind of start slow but snowball like a death, death spiral situation like you see here. The second thing uh, that's true about system dynamics is it's not really the, it's not really the, it doesn't predict the future with accuracy in, in terms of like what would my exact headcount be in, in quarter number 19 or quarter number 29. It's more about the overall shape of these things and what happens to the shape. Are they growing? Are they stable? Are they declining nicely? Or are they crashing? Are we oscillating? You know, it's more the shape of these curves that we study in system dynamics versus the individual data points uh, that it's uh, predicting in the future. And certainly the shape uh, would be something you would assume for a death spiral. So uh, that's it. It was a very simple model. Uh, next time we'll do some more complicated uh, models, but I just wanted to get, uh, get kind of the brain going around how to build these models and what they look like. All right, thanks.